Houston Real Estate Radio. Welcome back to Houston Real Estate Radio. Today we've been talking about, uh, when we've been talking with an inspector, Rondell and Riley. And next, I want to talk with an attorney here in the Houston area a little bit about landlords. Because what I've seen um, as a broker, what, what we are seeing is that there are a lot of people renting right now in the market because of the short sales and foreclosures that have been going on. And there re- really aren't enough rental properties out there to absorb the amount of people who want to rent. And we're seeing a lot of investors and people who really aren't investors who want to be investors um, come in and become landlords because they're buying up these short sales and foreclosures. And um, want to talk about some of that liability. Make sure that if you're going to do that, real estate's a great place to put your money. Um, but if you're going to do that, make sure that you really know the ins and outs of it. So today I've brought on um, Jess Bailey, and she's a partner at Bailey Law Firm in the Woodlands. And uh, we're really excited to have you on to discuss this with us. Well, thank you, Shannon. Thank you for having me today. And I, before I start, I do want to say Happy Father's Day to all those fathers. That's right. There. That's <laughs> right. Happy Father's Day. My dad's all the way in Georgia, so I don't know if he'll hear that. But <laughs> for sure, we want to uh, wish all those dads out there a wonderful Father's Day. So to get started, let's talk a little bit about the responsibilities of being a landlord, because it really does come with a lot more responsibility than most people ever realize. Landlords do have a lot of responsibilities, and they don't always understand all of them. They think, great, I'm going to be getting a check in the mail every month. But they don't think about the responsibilities of that check. Mm-hmm. Just like when you have a job, you have duties and responsibilities. Being a landlord is really like having a job. And so you have certain responsibilities to the tenant, to the state, to yourself, and you really need to follow through with those. And where you can find those responsibilities is the property code. And the property code for residential tenancies are 84 pages printed out. That's a lot. (laughs) That is a lot to go through. Yeah, there's no way they could remember all that, so that's a lot. And commercial is only eight pages. Amazing. What a difference. (laughs) Exactly. You have a lot more responsibilities when you're renting someone their house Mm -hmm. and their home where they live. So that is why it's very important to make sure you ask yourself certain questions before you become a landlord. So if you're thinking about putting some of your money into investment properties and renting them out, what are some of the things that you need to look at and ask yourself before you get started in that process? Do you have some Uh, just kind of a list that we can run through to to let people out there know, okay, you need to be aware of these things before you even take that step and go buy a rental property. Uh, Definitely. Uh, One of the biggest things is residential versus commercial. Who do you want as your tenants? What type of market do you want to serve? Where do you want to have that property? Mm -hmm. Do you want a single home? Do you want multifamily properties? There's different duties and responsibilities, and also it's a different market. You need to know it's a different market if you're in South Houston, downtown Houston, the Woodlands, Dallas. Make sure you have a competent realtor and broker that you're using because they are priceless. So always use a broker when you're trying to purchase a property as well as rent it out. It is definitely the best way to go. Use the professionals to your advantage. Yeah, definitely need a realtor because they are going to know your market better than anybody. And that's what they do. So yeah, you always want to use a realtor. Highly recommend it. (laughs) Um, So tell us some of those things that they really need to really need to ask themselves, okay, like, can they afford one that I, uh, I find is that, you know, can they afford the the mortgage and all the things that go with it, because you've got to maintain it, you know, there's a lot of things besides just paying the mortgage every month. And there are a lot of other things. There's the mortgage payments, the taxes, the insurance, the maintenance on the property, make sure that if there's not a tenant giving you a check every month, that you can make those payments yourself. And That's for a good how point. long? Mm-hmm. Because the, the, property may be vacant for a period of time, even though the, though the rental market is going, mm-hmm. you may have a tenant, but what if they lose their job? What if they can't pay you? You mm-hmm. don't want to lose your property because you had a great tenant and then they lost their job. Right. And you may be a, a landlord for five years and five years from now, you may have trouble getting a renter, even though you don't have trouble now. So definitely want to plan for the future. Exactly. Don't have that. You may find a great property that you think is a wonderful rental property. Look at your cash flow. If you're going to be, you know, really hard up month to month, then maybe find a property that's a little less funds for you and then upgrade later. 
What do you find that are, are kind of the most common mistakes that you see among the landlords that, you know, the most common problems that you see? Uh, a lot of the problems are... Because people normally come to you when they start having those problems. <laughs> right. I always recommend having an attorney in the beginning, so mm-hmm. then you don't have those problems. It's a less bumpy road as a landlord if you sure. have the right business team. The right business team consists of a realtor broker, a CPA, insurance broker, and an attorney. And the reasons for this is because an attorney is very important as well as your realtor when you're purchasing property. And the attorney is important looking over your title policy when you're purchasing that property. There may be liens on the exceptions that can be removed. I've had um, one of my clients that was purchasing a property that was a foreclosure. The title company was not going to remove certain liens, but then I gave them case law and reason on why those liens had expired. And then I got them taken off as exceptions. Wow. So the title company wasn't going to do it. And we, as realtors, we really rely on the title companies to, you know, we obviously review the title policies, but the title company is really who we rely on to make sure that that title policy is in place and that it's, you know, the way it should be. So um, that's a good recommendation for consumers to make sure that they have not only um, their purchase agreements and tenant landlord agreements um, reviewed by an attorney, but also the title policy. The title policy. You want to make sure that the title policy protects you in every way possible. Another big um, mistake that a lot of landlords make is that they use a lease from online or they purchase the 1495 landlord packet, be your own landlord, from Office Depot or Staples. Yeah, or those, Max. those are never a good idea. <laughs> no, you don't. I had a client who had purchased one of those and it talked about California law throughout the whole packet. Mm-hmm. We're not in California. Yeah. Each state has its own landlord tenant laws and it's state specific. You can't use a lease from Louisiana and enforce Louisiana laws in Texas. Right. It's only Texas. And the property code gives you things that you can and cannot waive as a landlord, your rights and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to waive those in your lease and you think, oh, well, I don't have to do that anymore because I waived it. Right. Texas you're still going to be responsible. You're still responsible. Yeah. yeah. You know, as realtors, we have promulgated forms, and I, I've had people ask me to change things on the forms. And, you know, we, we can't – there are certain things that you cannot change because, um, you know, they, they're they in there for a reason. Exactly. And you have a kit that you recommend for, te- for landlords as well that you can yes. provide for them. Is that right? Yes. I have a landlord kit that has a lease – Um, And it's a fillable lease that your broker and realtor can use because it only has um, open spots on the business terms. That's Mm -hmm. where your your broker is really going to help you is on the business terms. And it also includes form letters for um, non-renewal, extra charges, late fees, those other aspects form documents so then you can use them over and over and you have the correct language if there's a late payment or if you need to evict someone. Oh, that's great. That's great because that's usually when you go and find an attorney is when you need those forms. Exactly. So is this a kit that you give your clients um, or is this a kit that someone can come and buy uh, without actually you know, having a problem and, and needing to use you as an attorney? This kit is something that I provide. Um, y- anyone can come in and purchase this kit. Um, it comes either with or without LLC formations for um, landlord tenants. And um, that's another thing that I wanted to talk about was limiting your personal liability yeah. as a landlord. So how can you do that? I mean, can you limit your liability? You can do this. Uh, One of the biggest ways to do this is purchasing the property in a limited liability company. And what you want to do is have that property titled in that entity. And what I recommend is a two LLC process. One LLC is a series LLC that can hold all of your properties. And that will limit the liability of each property to itself. And the second LLC is the original LLC. And what that will do is that will serve as your property management company. Whether you outsource that role or not, Mm -hmm. that property management company will contract with the tenants, the property management outsource company, handymen, anyone, any of your vendors. So then your liability stays with that LLC and all your assets are in the series LLC. So when, when landlords are completing a lease, 
you recommend that they don't put their names on it as the landlord. They should form an LLC to put it in instead. That's correct. Because if it's in their personal name, if something bad happens on that property, someone slips and falls. Mm -hmm. There's um, some other type of injury. They can be personally liable for that if the property is in their own name. Wow, that's a lot to think about if you're becoming a landlord for the first time. And then another um, mistake that we find in the industry is that there are people who've been landlords for 10, 15 years, and the property uh, codes have changed so much um, that they're not familiar with what's, what's current. Um, so let's go to a commercial break, and we'll come back and talk a little bit more about the property code and um, some other things that are important for landlords when they're, um, they're going to go out there and rent their property. Thank you.